at the DJI booth with Willis, and we have a new 3-axis gimbal that you guys are unveiling here at the show. Yes. Uh, tell me, what is it? This is the new DJI Ronin. All right. It's, uh, it's the first product that we have that's not a multi-rotor platform of some sort. And uh, what it is, it's, uh, well, once again, it's a 3-axis gimbal that can hold up to 16 pounds okay. of weight that's capacity. Great. So uh, a Dragon with a C-Motion, with uh, or Preston or batteries and wireless transmitters, no problem. We at personally all. use the FS700, so That's obviously no it would be great for that. At okay. all, exactly. Uh, a few different things that we have on here is one of the most important things is the toolless balancing. Yeah, and uh, it's important. Gonna, exactly, very important because it saves you time. I have a DIY gimbal and it's a pain in the butt. So uh, we've been looking for a solution that <laughs> makes it easy to balance. So, uh, so there's going to be like a knob over here and a knob over here somewhere where you can kind of like adjust. And once you get into the ballpark, there's an app you can use your iPhone on and just press auto calibrate, and the motor is going to do the rest. Oh, really? For you to tune. Nice. So if you have a heavy camera, mm -hmm. a light camera. It'll do the it'll do the auto tuning for you. Really? Wow, that's pretty awesome. Uh, how this is different, like, than any other uh, handheld gimbals out there, is right. the fact that you can do a little eye level mode right here. Uh, obviously, you can uh, you can have a second operator, so we're not doing this whole follow mode. But we try we uh, what do you call it? We value the single operator position. So right. you know, so one person can do everything from tilting to like panning and everything. So that's one mode. Now obviously you had it upside down. You were saying before that that doesn't flip. So if you have some with a top mount, you can mount it right side up exactly. that way. Exactly. Or just flip it in post. Or just flip it in post. Yeah. It's really easy. Uh, there is this mode as well, which can easily go through doorways. Awesome mode, yeah, yeah. that's cool. Yeah. So um, the battery that it comes with yep. is able to um, hold. What size battery is that? This is a 3,400 milliamp battery. It's a okay. four cell, so 14.4 volts. Probably get a whole day out of that? You would get four hours out of it. Four, wow. Ooh. But if you want four of these, if you have yeah. four of these in your kit, it's able to power your system up for 16 hours. Okay. So however often you can do a 16 hour a day doing oh, one yeah. of these is yeah. gonna be fun. Uh, it's gonna I, be available for under five thousand dollars. Okay. Is and there a about uh, a month? At about a month. Okay. In about a month. Yeah, I noticed you also mentioned this. Is uh, oh, tell yeah. me about that. So this is a quick release system right here, where we're still developing, and uh, what it, what you can do is quick release this whole handle system out, and you can hook this on a copter that's able to hold the oh, uh, hold that weight. weight. Yeah, exactly. And then, of course, it's all self-contained. Your IMU, the flight everything, control, everything. Exactly. So there's a 5.8 gigahertz. Uh, receiver built into this, and we give okay. you a transmit, radio transmitter. Oh, okay, I was gonna ask that, thanks. <laughs> yeah, um, and there's also a port over here, so it's for upgrades, okay, um, updates on firmware, as well as the ability to power your own Futaba receiver or Spectrum or JR Hub, whatever you use. Okay, so you're on 2.4 instead of 5.8, so you can get a longer range. That's great, yeah. And yeah, I like the mounting options, nice and clean. Uh, yeah. Love the quick release. It's uh, that's really big, be able to be quick in the field. Oh yeah, you, you can know, mount it on a crane, a copter, a car, whatever it is that you want. Yeah. All right, Willis. Uh, DJI announced before NAB that you're coming out with a new version of the GoPro gimbal. Yes. Uh, the H3 3D. Yes, that is correct. Uh, so can you tell me a little bit about the changes that were made to the gimbal system? Absolutely. No. Before with the H3 2D, it's a two axis gimbal. So when you pin your copter, you get this kind of like robotic motion and we didn't like it either. So you get some tail wag too. Exactly, and going, exactly. Yeah. But now with the H3 3D gimbal, which is a three axis gimbal, what the third axis does is that it enables smooth pans. So when you right. pan the copter, when you're traveling, so you've got panning, a follow mode in it, basically. Exactly, exactly. And that's, that's exactly what it is. Actually. Yeah, and uh, now also, when you're going to be panning, you're probably going to get the legs in there once in a while. Is, do you when you, well, here's the thing. When you're panning, you're never really going to pan this fast. Right. Right? Uh, yeah, that's... Uh, but then, like, what, it depends on also the uh, the mode that you're in as far as your field of view. So let's take it up in the air. And we're in attitude right now. You see that little plastic thing? Yep. So if we're, like, uh, if we're panning, 
we're not going to be fast enough to physically see the leg. Right. Especially okay. if you're in narrow mode or medium mode. Okay. And you're never really going to get that kind of emotion if you want a smooth motion, regardless. I always shoot in 2.7K uh, anyways. 2.7K, yeah, 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 yeah. So I'm always cropping, you know, and stuff like that. Right. Okay. Well, there you go. That's that. All right. And, um... Now, also with the tilt, I know uh, when I had the uh, the 2D, you installed the tilt function on there. Yes. You weren't able to adjust the speed at all, so I'd like to, you know, are you able to do that now? I believe you are able to go into the assistant software and adjust the gain on this. Um, so no, no exponential curve or anything curves no, like that, no, no, but no, just no, the gain no, on no, it. Yeah, it's the gain on it. Okay. Yeah. yeah, that'd be great because uh, it felt kind of too twitchy for me. Especially if you have a Futaba or, or if you have like a Spectrum You can just like build that. it right in. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. All, it's very powerful what those products can do. All right, now this is obviously on a Phantom 2, but this is totally compatible with the Phantom 1 with the uh, with the gimbal control unit, the PMU, and, and even your board. Fantastic question. Oh, thank you. I have no idea. <laughs> All right. From my understanding, you need the Phantom 2 with the... Uh, yeah, because the, there's like different a different mounting hole in the bottom. This is like larger, so it can actually okay. fit in there oh, for yeah. the third axis. Well, I, I did see that you have an adapter. Yes. Um, so so you, you can, I know you can physically attach it to the Phantom Then one. you're good. So it, it, it should be all, so like I have the uh, the main board, you know, the gimbal yeah. control unit yeah. in it. Then it should just be a So I can just be able thing. to plug it in exactly. there and a firmware update. Yeah. All right, awesome. Yeah. Uh, and same video functionality and everything else. Same video functionality. Now you can hook a light bridge on, which is not here. But with a light bridge, if you know much about that? No, I don't. Okay, well, it's a 1080p video transmitter that also, uh, that doesn't collide with your uh, radio transmitter. All right. So it kind of merges the video and your radio control into one unit. Okay. And then you could send it off to four or eight different receivers. Wow, okay. And uh, yeah, it connects to your phone as well as uh, HDMI out. Nice. And it can go all the way up to like maybe two miles or so. It extends the range of your radio transmitter as well as your video. Okay, yeah. awesome. So for live broadcast stuff, they love it. All right, yeah. great. Uh, you announced it a while ago, yes. but you have the S1000, which is your new octocopter. Yes. Uh, can you just go over the features of the of copter course. for me? So the best thing right now is it's able to carry the Canon 5D, so it can carry a heavier payload. Uh, right now, we have the lens compatibility with the Canon 24mm. Um, there'll be more later down the okay. road. There is the ability to fold down your arms and I think this is a fantastic thing because right. you're able to carry this somewhere. You're able to put it in a flight case and fly it off to Australia or wherever. How tight are these in there? I mean, they're pretty... They're, I'm not going to yeah, crank on it, but They're pretty yeah. tight. Okay. So they're really good. They're really sturdy. So if you have uh, two 8,000 milliamp batteries, 16,000 total, you can power this thing up for about maybe 14 minutes or 14 so. 14 minutes? That's yeah. great. And uh, so the, uh, you said there's going to be multiple lens versions of the gimbal for the 5D coming soon? Yes, is that, that is to be announced. Okay. Um, be announced. That's something that's in the works. All right. But no then R&D kind around. of sort of uh, shifted over to another product. Okay. <laughs> another product. So All we right. don't know how priority, how much priority is in that right All now. All right. Well, besides the obvious of like uh, a heavier payload or anything, are there yes. any other... Um, any other advantages to getting the 1,000 over, say, the 800? I would say with the octocopter, it flies a lot smoother. And for whatever reason, if this thing decides to hit a wall or something like that, and this thing decides to break, it still can operate on seven seven, uh, seven arms. Oh, really? So you just bring it back home and just uh, fix that. Great. Well, thank you very much, Russ. Right. Appreciate it. Thank you very Have a good much. Show. It was fun. Special thanks to our sponsors for making our NAB coverage possible.